It was a Friday night, and I had a date. I was at the bar getting drinks for both of us. We had just finished dancing. The music was blaring. It was a combination of beer and cigarettes and cologne. Suddenly, as I'm handing money to the bartender, a deafening silence occurred. The lights went up, the music went off, and you could hear a pin drop, literally. My boyfriend rushed in from the dance floor. He walked over and said, put the drinks down, let's leave. We go out into Christopher Street, and there are what look like a hundred police cars all facing the entrance, and crowds of people looking at us. The kids coming out of the Stonewall, the onlookers, the police, everyone was just kind of standing there. It was not a riot in the sense of people breaking furniture and police hitting people over the head. It was just an enormous crowd of people. And then the police started to say, okay, everyone leave. And the drag queens, they're the ones who said to the police, we're not leaving. And they formed a chorus line outside in front of the bar. And they stood there dancing in the street. They were all Puerto Rican drag queens and Irish cops. It was a funny, funny confrontation. When we came back on Saturday night, we stood there on the street and held hands and kissed, something we would never have done three days earlier. It made me feel wonderful. I stood there with chills. It was like when you're watching a parade and the flag goes by and, you know, you see something you're so proud of and you see your troops and you get that chill inside of you. I got a chill. I got a chill seeing guys on the street holding hands and kissing. And in the week that followed, I got phone calls from relatives, cousins, my brother, my aunt. We're just going to find out if you're okay. We know you go to places like this. We want to make sure you're all right. That means they knew all along. It's like I was wearing a sign on my back. They knew. We never discussed it. I never once had to say to anyone in my family, I'm gay. How did you feel about yourself between the beginning of Stonewall and after Stonewall? Did you feel that you were a different person? No, I didn't feel that I was a different person. I was the same me. I was a homosexual person coming from an old-fashioned Jewish neighborhood, living in Greenwich Village on my own. I felt the same. I felt comfortable. But I felt the world now is more comfortable with me. And Stonewall did that for me. You wanted to see us cry. I've always been the kind of woman who was a baby person, and I always wanted babies, surrounded myself with babies as a little kid. And also as a little kid, I had an awareness of being a lesbian really quite young. So I, I sort of shelved motherhood. I think as my biological clock ticked is when I started to say, oh, if I want to have a family, how am I going to do that? And as it is, I didn't have a kid until I was 37, so it was somewhat later in life. Telling him I was gay or that his other mother was gay was not a hard conversation. He knew it from the cradle, and it was very normalized and very celebratory in spirit in the household. Um, but then later, when kids leave home and they're going to school for the first time, suddenly the larger culture starts weighing in. And he came home and he said, are there two kinds of gay people? Are there good kinds and bad kinds? Because he had heard it used positively and negatively. I remember when he was going off to day camp and he was wearing... You know, these little rainbow, like, freedom rings, their little gay symbol. And I thought, oh, man, this could really not go well. <laughs> and I was trying to rehearse with him and not, and, and not say, you can't wear those to camp. Someone right. will beat you up. So I said, um, what if someone asks you what your rainbow rings mean? What will you say? And he said, I'll say they mean gay pride. And I said, well, that's good. But And then what if they ask you if you're gay? And he stopped walking and he said, well, I'll say yes, because you are. So I am, too. And I said, well, you know, you're not necessarily like Grammy. She's not gay, but I am, and she was my mom. And so you might be different from me, but you don't know that yet. Once when he was still, still little enough that he was sitting in the back seat of the car in the car seat, and we were driving somewhere, and he goes, Mom, we're lesbians, right? 
I'm like, oh, wait, no, not actually, no. <laughs> and then later on, he sort of came out of the closet. He said, I'm not gay or straight. I'm a bachelor. He was like eight. And I said, okay, well, that'll do for now. I feel like LGBT people are really changing what families can look like. It's been really exciting to watch kids come of age, and instead of us saying how it is for them, they're telling us what's good for them. That's been a blast. You didn't count on me. EMTs arrived within minutes, and uh, they called the police because they saw me standing in the driveway, you know, an African-American man in a white neighborhood. And when the police arrived, they wanted to arrest me for assault and battery and breaking and entering. And when I got to the hospital, I found out that they were not going to give me any information because I had no relationship to Ron. As far as they were concerned, I was a stranger. They called Ron's family in Vermont and said, can you give permission for us to talk to David? And his 75-year-old mom said, of course, they're partners. So they came out, and they said that he was uh, dead on arrival. My whole world just kind of fell apart, and I felt pretty broken. You know, where do I go from here? So I joined a support group. One meeting in walked a man. That man's name was Rob Compton. Three years later, we had a commitment ceremony. Lots of people came, and they thought it was our wedding, and we said, no, this isn't a wedding because we don't have the right to get married. So it was amazing to become a plaintiff in a major lawsuit against the state of Massachusetts. Part of the decision to be part of the case was to talk with my family. My dad wasn't sure. All of a sudden, his only son is going to become this prominent, out, gay, black man. So I talked with Dad about some of the issues. A couple of hours later, Dad said, you're doing the right thing. May 17th, 2004 was the first weddings. Dad said, well, you're going to City Hall, and you're going to be part of all of this excitement. What about me? I said, Dad, I'm sending a limo to pick you up. My dad had never been in a limo. He got a new suit, suit and came down, and limo took him down, and he, he was in the front row, and when we walked down the aisle, both his arms were in the air. He was 89 at that point. And he didn't see it just for gay people. He saw it for, you know, all people that had been discriminated against, and his whole life he had been discriminated against. So I think for dad, it was just a victory that he could be a part of. He could not have been more proud. It was a great day. And I'm not alone with a change of love. And the walls come tumbling down. I was at a recruiting event, and I had my cell phone. I put it in the little Marine Corps Hummer that we had. And one of the other recruiters, a staff sergeant, went through my cell phone and saw some of the text messages that I had to my boyfriend. The atmosphere at the office just changed from that point on. So I wrote a letter to my commanding officer saying, you know, I'm I'm gay. And the sergeant major basically said, you're not gay, it's a phase, you need to go through counseling. They sent me home, I couldn't show up for work for my safety, which I wasn't really concerned with because I can handle my own. But when you want to do something that badly, and you've put five years of blood, sweat, and tears into it, and then all of a sudden it's not really an option for you anymore. It's a hard thing to take. Uh, On my discharge paperwork, it says RE4, and that means that I'm never, ever allowed to be in the military again, which sucks. I mean, if I could go back, I would. How has your family responded? Well, my family didn't find out I was gay until after I was discharged. I kept playing this role as if I was still in the Marine Corps. My dad and my stepmother decided that something was wrong, so they decided to take a trip out here. At the time, I had a boyfriend, and I was like, well, if I'm going to come out, I guess now's as good a time as any to do it. I said, 
I got out of the Marine Corps because I was gay. And my dad said, uh, yeah. That's his answer to everything. I'm like, Dad, it's raining outside. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> so it was assuring. I was happy about that. And my life changed dramatically when I got out. I'm able to hang out with my boyfriend and hold hands walking down the street. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm very disappointed that I can't serve, but my feelings toward the military really didn't change. It's just being equal is something that I think everyone deserves. And... Obviously, we have a long way to go. And I've learned from my mistakes. Pick myself up off the floor. I have learned just what it takes. My second year at Rutgers, I came out of the closet and got involved in the gay organization at school. I was pretty much doing what I was taught in the Boy Scouts, take a leadership role, be active, be visible. And I was speaking at a conference on the needs of gay teenagers. There was a newspaper there, and there was a photograph taken for the Star Ledger in New Jersey. I didn't really think much of it, but then as a result of that, I received a letter in the mail from the Boy Scouts. They said avowed homosexuals are not permitted in the Boy Scouts of America which kind of blindsided me because I think as a gay kid, it didn't fit in in a lot of places. But the Boy Scouts was someplace I felt important and valuable and connected. But seeing those words in that letter, I knew that it was wrong. I wasn't going to walk away from it. I didn't think at that time that I would have gone on through the legal system for 10 years and wind up in the Supreme Court. I just, I was 19 and I thought, you know, I'm right, they're wrong, and justice and the courts will see this. To lose the Supreme Court was really devastating. When the Boy Scout lawsuit started, I was out to my parents, and there were times when we didn't talk and there was fighting. It's not usually the case that your son comes out, and then a couple of you know, months later, he's in the New York Times. And I think my parents did the right thing before they fully accepted the right thing. Ultimately, that's kind of what I was thinking that the Boy Scouts would do with me. Not that they were thrilled that I would be gay and visibly gay, but I did think that they would rise to the occasion.